My name is Ragnar Lohn. Uh, it's actually an old Viking name, so it's pronounced differently than that, but uh, I won't go into that. Um, I come from Load Impact, and I'm going to talk about HTTP2 and uh, HTTP1. So this is a session about protocols. So first of all, who are we? We are basically a load testing service. We um, generate traffic uh, simulating users or applications that access a site application or API, and we see how much traffic that application can handle before it becomes slow or inaccessible. And uh, we've been going on for quite a while, and we're a fairly popular service. Uh, and everyone always says they're hiring, so I won't I, I tried not to be too cliche, so I wrote we're application positive. We like to <laughs> receive applications from people who would want to work with us. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the protocols, uh, and then I'm going to present some results from a small study we made to try to figure out what exactly the performance gains can be from going from HTTP 1 to HTTP 2. And usually when I say HTTP 1, I mean HTTP 1.1, because that's the protocol we're using now. But it's too much of a pain to say point 0.1 all the time. <laughs> so what's the problem with HTTP? Uh, Mike Belch at Google did some research a while ago. And uh, he found out that uh, if you have a, a 5 megabit connection, or if you have 5 megabit of bandwidth between the client and the server, uh, the average web page will load in about 1.5 seconds. Uh, that's the page load time in this uh, diagram. And if you double the available bandwidth, uh, load time will only be slightly improved. So what we see is that today people have fast enough internet connections and the network is fast enough bandwidth-wise that uh, more bandwidth doesn't really help. It doesn't improve load time. <coughs> so. On the other hand, network delay is a big problem to HTTP today. And network delay has a linear relationship with page load time. So if you reduce network delay, you always get faster page load times. So basically, HTTP is a protocol that is very network delay sensitive. Uh, and if we go back in history a little bit, uh, the first HTTP specification was uh, released in 1996. And back then, web pages were very small, uh, and internet bandwidth was very, very limited. People were on dial-up modems that could do maybe 40, 50 kilobits per second. Uh, and of course, today, they have multi-megabit connections, so it's maybe it's a factor 100 faster today in terms of bandwidth. Um, and this is uh, an invented page load uh, that uh, happened. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, supposed to show a page load in 1996. So we had pages that were very small and consisted of very few resources, an HTML document and some images. And the page loads could look something like this. I've actually enlarged my mouse pointer here so I can point at stuff. It's a huge one. So basically, a client would load the index.html file. Uh, like, like normally happens, and the blue part here is the connection time. So that's the time it takes to set up a TCP connection, which involves the bouncing of pack, a few packets back and forth. Not much data is transferred, but uh, the network delay determines how long that takes, that connection setup. And then we have the orange part, which is uh, the request time, basically. The client sends the HTTP request, the GET request, uh, and it takes a while for that packet to arrive at the server, and then the server starts responding and data starts coming back. And then the green part is the download time. Uh, so that's the time it takes to download all the data, and that's uh, limited by the, the available bandwidth. So what we see here is that, well, first the client loads the index HTML, then it closes that connection, it opens two more connections and downloads two images in parallel, and then it closes those connections and opens two more and finally downloads the last images it needs to render the page. And what we see is that the whole page load time is dominated by the download time here. 
So, and that's because in 1996, bandwidth was so limited that every single piece of uh, data you wanted do to download took a long time to download, basically. And the reason it only downloads two things at once is that the, the, the HTTP RFC said that you should only use max two connections per host name to be a, a well-behaved uh, netizen. <laughs> Uh, what happened since then was that pages grew more complicated and heavier. Uh, from, uh, this, is, this is just a graph of what's happened the last four years, but this has been a continuous development since the late 90s. So pages have grown really fast in size and also in terms of complexity. The number of objects has gone up. Uh, and if we did a page load today using a browser from 1996, we would see something like this. <coughs> So the browser can only use two connections in parallel because it's an old browser. Uh, and what we will see is that the download speed, uh, the download time, the green part, uh, is very, very short here. And it's actually been exaggerated in the, this graph. It's so short today, usually, that it doesn't even register. You can't even see it. So bandwidth has improved tremendously. And that means that download time is almost insignificant. So the majority of time is spent setting up connections and uh, making requests. And of course, that takes time because the network delay is there. If you want to send a data packet to the other side of the globe, it will take a couple of hundred milliseconds for it to go there and come back. And that's the speed of light. It's hard to get around. So here we have a page load with 25 resources. So it's only a quarter of the actual average size of a page today, which is about 100 resources. Uh, but we can see that, yeah, it, there's a lot of iteration. There's a lot of request response, request response, because it can only download two things at once. And it, all, it tears down the connections and starts up new connections all the time. So, then in 1997, HTTP 1.1 was specified the first time. It's been updated since, but that was the first specification. And that's the protocol we're still using today, basically, now almost 20 years later. And it had some uh, performance improvements. One of them was connection reuse. So if we take the same page load and we add connection reuse, we get a page load time that is reduced because uh, there are only two connections being made, and then they are reused, and more requests are sent over the same connections. They're not torn down and uh, restarted. So previously, we had a page load time of like 3.8 seconds, and with connection reuse, we're down to like 2.8, 2.7. So that's a big improvement. And remember, these examples are just, I mean, they're just to show the concept. So these are not real page loads. But then the browser makers realized that two connections kind of sucks. It's, uh, if we add more connections, it should be faster. So they ignored the RFC, and they added more connections. Um, I don't know who started it, uh, but they added three or four. And then all the other browsers had to follow, because if you were the slowest browser around, no one would use you, of course. So uh, yeah, this is what happens when you go from two to four connections. So you can see the, the HTML file is loaded with one connection, and then uh, the client starts up three more connections. And it uses a total of four connections to download the rest of the content. And now we're down to 1.5 seconds from 2.7 or something. So it's almost a 50% improvement uh, by doubling the number of connections. And today, most browsers use six connections per unique host that they talk to. Um, and then we have pipelining, uh, which was also part of the HTTP 1.1 standard. And pipelining was basically uh, the client being able to ask the server for many items in one go. So here we see pipelining uh, in, in the sense the client begins by retrieving the HTML file, like usual. It opens three more connections. And uh, by this, when it's retrieved and parsed the HTML file, it knows it needs 24 more resources to render the page. So it opens three more connections for a total of four. And then it issues six GET requests on each of those four connections uh, at the same time. 
and the server can then just push the data out to the client. Uh, in e on each connection, uh, the six items will come in sequence, one after the other. So now we're down to like one second from 1.5 seconds, so that's also a big improvement. The problem with pipelining was that it never really worked. It was uh, hard to implement. It had uh, interoperability issues. Uh, there was a head of line blocking problem that was hard to get around. So in the end, it turned out to be really tricky to get it to work and to get it to actually uh, deliver speed improvements. So uh, the result is that very few applications implemented pipelining, and of those that did, uh, no one today has it enabled by default. No browsers or servers that I know. So pipelining is more or less dead. So people try to get more performance out of HTTP by doing certain optimizations, um, and ba basically to get around the weaknesses of the protocol and its delay sensitivity. And the, the first three, spriting, inlining, and concatenating, uh, they are there to basically reduce the number of uh, HTTP requests made. So spriting, of course, I, I expect most people know all this already, so I won't be too long here. Uh, spriting, of course, is to, to mash together lots of small images into one large image, so you get one HTTP request instead of many. And inlining is basically taking images and putting them inside uh, CSS files to reduce also the number of requests. And concatenating is uh, mashing together JavaScript. So all those three reduce the number of requests that the client has to make uh, to, to render a page. Uh, and that speeds things up. And sharding is a different thing. Sharding is uh, when you distribute your content over multiple unique hosts to get around the limitation of six TCP connections per host. So if you have a, a client that downloads 100 resources from one single host, it can only download six resources at a time because it's only allowed to open six TCP connections to that host. But if you spread your content over three hosts, you can get up to 18 connections. So that's also a more connections hack. Uh, to, to trick the clients into using more connections to download your content. Uh, and all these optimizations are, of course, they are uh, associated with a cost. So I think, I think the biggest cost is in terms of complexity. It get, gets more complicated to develop web applications, and it gets more complicated to operate them. Uh, I think that's the, the biggest problem. But there's also technical uh, costs in terms of overhead, like if you have many TCP connections, you get unwanted effects like uh, protocol overhead and uh, many connections stealing capacity from other applications that use fewer connections. Um, and also, uh, uh, lost the thread there. Um, ah, anyway, there's, there's technical overhead, but there's also overhead when you're developing applications. And I think the developing applications overhead, the human time lost, is the biggest issue. So HTTP2 was basically invented to solve these issues and to, to deliver a protocol that, was, that didn't have these flaws, that, uh, where people didn't have to do various workarounds to get good performance. And HTTP2 has something called multiplexing. Uh, and this is what our uh, invented page load would look like with HTTP2 multiplexing. So what happens here is that the client downloads the index.html file, as usual, uh, and it realizes it needs 24 more resources, and then it asks the server for all those 24 resources at once uh, over one single TCP connection. And the server just sends them all uh, simultaneously over one single connection. And that is multiplexing. And multiplexing is if we take these two toy trains and see them as two like JPEGs or something that needs to be transferred, uh, then multiplexing means that both images are chopped up into tiny pieces, and those pieces are interleaved and sent over a single TCP channel uh, in uh, interleaved. So they are sent simultaneously, and they arrive more or less simultaneously on the client side. If we look uh, 
just an overview at what's uh, different between HTTP 2 and HTTP 1. Uh, HTTP 2 is a binary protocol, uh, while HTTP 1 is a text protocol. Uh, and HTTP 2 is also mostly encrypted. The, the standard doesn't uh, force people to encrypt, but in practice, uh, most clients require encryption for HTTP 2. So I think in, 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 the, in practice, we won't see much unencrypted HTTP 2 traffic. Um, then the protocol negotiation can happen through an upgrade header, an upgrade HTTP header that the client sends, or it can be uh, negotiated during the TLS handshake using something called ALPN. Uh, multiplexing, that great feature, is done with using something called streams. And streams are uh, basically the, the different uh, logical channels uh, that can send different data items. And you can have many streams operating concurrently. And the streams are really cool because the client can freely uh, prioritize streams uh, and they can can the client can cancel a stream at any time at no, no real cost. So it's very, very flexible and much more efficient uh, than, than uh, pipelining ever was. Um, and it works. <laughs> so another thing, another performance improvement is header compression. So we see that today lots of headers are being sent with every HTTP request. We have lots of cookie data and stuff that can be quite a, quite a large, yeah, large number of bytes for every request. So header compression is, is uh, included by default in HTTP2, uh, always on. Um, also, we have server push, which is, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's, uh, it allows the service basically to push content to the client that the client hasn't asked for, uh, which I don't know if anyone is using yet. And it might turn out to be another pipelining feature that is, looks good on paper, but it's really hard to actually use. Uh, in practice, but we will see. I think it's I exciting, at least, because it's, uh, in theory, it allows you to really speed things up if you can send content before the client knows it needs it. Uh, if we look at the status of HTTP2 today, uh, most browsers support HTTP2. Most, all the major ones do. And of the installed base, over 70% today uh, support HTTP2. Uh, and server side is also looking very good. All the big, uh, big servers support uh, HP2, and all the or the biggest tech giants also who have their own server uh, applications. They also support HTTP2 today. Uh, Firefox uh, collects traffic statistics from all their users, uh, and they've seen that 24% of Firefox traffic today is HTTP2. So that's. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good for such a short time since it became a de facto standard. So the second part of the presentation is the experiment. Uh, wanted to see what kind of real world performance gain you get from going uh, from HTTP 1 to HTTP 2. Uh, and what we did was we took a well-known site and we downloaded all, its, all the content uh, on, the, on the main page. Uh, and we hosted everything locally in a lab setup. Uh, and then we measured load times using HTTP 1 and 2 and uh, emulating different network characteristics, particularly network delay. So the site we chose was Amazon. Uh, and we chose Amazon because it's a well-known site and it's uh, fairly, it has a lot of resources. It's a fairly uh, large amount of data but not so much JavaScript. Uh, dynamic content makes it much harder to host things locally. And the setup was uh, a fairly uh, powerful Mac with uh, VMware, Fu VMware Fusion uh, running a Linux guest operating system. Uh, we had Nginx with HTTP2 support, and we had an experimental HTTP2 server called Shimmercat also. And uh, of course, uh, NetM, the Linux package that allows you to emulate like packet loss and network delay and things like that. And for the client, we used Chrome on the host operating system. And um, yeah, right into the test results, we saw this is the minimum load time for HTTP 1 and for HTTP 2. Uh, 
as a function of different network delays between client and server. And we can see that HTTP2 outperforms HTTP1 by, by a fairly big margin. And both of them have linear, a linear relationship between uh, the load time and the network delay. So HTTP2 doesn't behave differently in that way from HTTP1. It's just better than HTTP1. Um, we can see that the, the load time was reduced between 50 and 70%, which is quite good. Um, one thing that uh, I think was a little bit interesting is that uh, the, the, the relative speed change, here you can see the speed change between uh, HTTP 1 and 2 in percentage numbers, and the relative speed change flattens out and uh, doesn't imp it doesn't improve uh, relative to HTTP 1 after you get to a certain network latency. And that was a little bit unintuitive for me. I, I thought it would get better and better with increased latency, but there's a, turns out there's a minimum theoretical load time that you, you can't pass, really, with uh, both protocols. Um, so, yeah, between 50 and, and 70% uh, reduced load time is quite good. We, of course, uh, HTTP 2 implementations are still quite young. So they are probably not optimized. They might be a little bit buggy. Uh, and the sites, on the other hand, are optimized for HTTP 1.1. Uh, and also our lab setup is not 100% realistic. We didn't manage to simulate 100% of the content that, that's loaded in a regular page load. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, there are some, you should take this with a grain of salt, but still the, the difference is quite huge. So I think in most cases, people will see quite big performance benefits going from HTTP 1 to 2. Uh, and in the worst cases, they won't see any performance uh, degradation, at least. So we have uh, a test tool, uh, http2.loadimpact.com, that we're <laughs> currently working on writing a new backend for. <laughs> so it's, it's not up. It's going to be up next week. Uh, and it basically does what we did in our research. So it downloads the content from a site or a URL that you specify, and then it hosts the content locally and uh, loads it locally using HTTP 1 and 2 and simulating uh, some network delay, uh, yeah, a, a reasonable network delay number. Uh, so you get, a, you get a figure for how much faster that particular site would be if it was loaded over HTTP 2 instead of HTTP 1. And uh, the code is also on GitHub, so we're, we're trying to make this a completely transparent project. Anyone else can set up the same site if they want to. Um, yeah, coming next week, so it's not uh, entirely ready. <laughs> That's it for me, I think. If there's any like questions or anything. Yeah? It's kind of hard to hear you. Can you, is there like a mic or something? I was asking, is Oh yeah, no, it's not mandatory. It's just that the clients, uh, most clients have decided not to support HTTP2 over un plain unencrypted um, channels. So I think uh, all clients require uh, encryption for, for HTTP2 except um, Internet Explorer. Or that, that was the case earlier, at least. Any other questions? Yeah? Sorry? The, yeah. That was the on-load event. Yeah. So... Uh, not yet. Uh, the question was, are these slides posted somewhere? Uh, not yet, but they will be. Uh, O'Reilly usually <laughs> wants you to send your slides, and I, I will do that. <laughs> yeah? Uh, 
Yeah. So if, if it's running over a single socket or a single TCP connection, how are all the multiple files like reassembled or yeah. Yeah. It basically works a little bit like TCP actually. So you have you have a uh, you have all these ch ch channels. You have you have one TCP connection and then you have multiple streams that uh, can be sent over the same connection. So every piece of data is uh, like if you have a JPEG or something, it's divided into small chunks, and every chunk is sent as a frame of a of a certain uh, stream. So it's labeled with like frame sequence number and belongs to stream X, and then the the receiver just reassembles uh, all the different streams at the other end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so is the client going to re, uh, request the, the uh, index.html or is the server going to push that or be smart? That was the question, right? So yeah, the, the protocol actually only um, affects how things are transferred over the wire. So it, it retains complete backward compatibility with HTTP 1 in, in most other respects. So all the URL uh, addressing schemes and everything is similar, like the, the uh, status codes, the headers, everything is the same. So for application developers, uh, most application developers will not have to worry if it's HTTP 2 or HTTP 1, uh, but it can be useful to know the underlying mechanics. Yeah? If it's required, server push. Yeah, I mean, as far as I know, no one's doing server push today. We're seeing, I know there are people who are thinking about it and are trying to develop like smart servers that can figure out what clients need and push it, uh, push it before they ask for it. And I guess like index.html would be an obvious candidate for push. Uh, but on the other hand, the first thing the client does is set up a TCP connection to the server. The server doesn't know about the client until that happens. And as soon as the connection is set up, it's like packet, packet, and then packet. And with the last packet, usually the, the HTTP request, the GET request goes out also for index.html. So the server would probably not start pushing stuff much earlier. Or maybe you can gain one round trip network or uh, network uh, one way uh, delay perhaps. But, but uh, I don't think there's much to gain from pushing that because you can't do it any earlier anyway. Uh, no, uh, how do you start using it? You're using it right now probably. I mean, if you, if you connect to Google or Facebook or Twitter, you're using HTTP 2. If you have a reasonably late or recent browser. So most browsers have auto update. So most, that's why we have over 70% coverage already. So, so many people already run HTTP 2 without knowing it. If you open like uh, the developer tools or uh, look at the network, uh, trace or the, the waterfall diagrams, you can see that there are always some, some HTTP2 calls uh, or, or fetches are sprinkled there between all the other. Yeah. Are there any CDNs supporting uh, HTTP2? I think, I think Akamai does. But I'm I'm not entirely certain. I know they're working on it also. Uh, but it's like HTTP2 is that's something one one person said to me that smaller sites that will not be out on the edge nodes of, of a CDN because they have too little traffic. So the edge nodes won't have them their content cached. Smaller sites would benefit hugely from HTTP2. A large site where all the content is you know constantly available on edge nodes, and the edge nodes don't have to fetch it from a central location, then you might not see a huge performance improvement going to HTTP 2, because you will be so close to the content already. Yeah? Uh, what's the <coughs> Sorry, what's the? What's the, what's the adoption on mobile? 
on mobile? Uh, good question. What's the adoption on, on mobile devices? I actually don't know. I don't know that. Sorry. Yeah? Okay, I think I heard the question. Uh, is, uh, is there any, uh, I mean, are there any reasons to still use these workarounds if you run HP2, right? Uh, no, uh, they won't hurt, though. So that's nice. So, I mean, uh, they might hurt slightly, but it's like a percentage, maybe, slower or something. So it's basically no significant change. So you can still do the workarounds during a transition period, and you won't get you know, hurt by it. Your performance won't get hurt by it. Yeah? Sorry, I, I, can you? What servers? What? Yeah? Web services. Or web servers. <laughs> I can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> if you have multiple web services. Um, yeah, that should work. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Same reason it shouldn't work. So, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.